Today I'm going to be showing you the basics of creating a custom skin for Sackboy in Little Big Planet by using a photo editor, workbench, and toolkit. I'm going to be creating a material for the character Blue Bear from the Animal Crossing series. So the way I'm going to start this is I'm just going to open up a texture for a skin that's already in the game, which will be kind of a base that we can work off. And I like to use this skin because it gives you an idea of where Sackboy's body parts are within the UVs. So Blue Bear's skin is mostly this light coloured blue, so the first thing I'm going to do is just take that colour, and apply it as a base where we can add the other elements onto now. And I'll just put this layer above so we can actually see what we're doing still. So the easiest thing to do next is probably going to be the hands and feet, since they're mostly just white and they have this kind of fade going on. So again, I'm just going to go and get the white colour, then start drawing on this where the hands and feet are. Now we can't really see where Sackboy's feet are on the texture. I know that they're around here though. We will be doing this more precisely later on though. Right now I'm just making a rough base for the texture. And so we can see where we're up to now if I just turn this off. That's our texture at the moment. Now the face and hair are probably going to be the most difficult, but it shouldn't be too bad since I have copies of the original textures. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to copy this whole texture and put it as a new layer in here. First I need to get rid of a couple things though, like we don't really want pupils in it because Sackboy already has eyes in his model. And now I can try and roughly place it where Sackboy's face should be. And now I just need to try and get the bottom half in here too. So now that we have this basic layout, we can save it and apply it to Sackboy's model in Blender to see how it looks, and there's probably going to be a lot of problems that we have to fix. So once you have your Sackboy model in Blender, and you replace the base texture with your own, you'll see that it doesn't really line up properly, but this is pretty easy to fix. We just have to go into the shading menu, and on the mapping node that goes into the base colour, just change the scale to 1. I also just like to change the normal map to the white cotton one, since it looks better. So as you can see we have a few problems. The feet aren't really white, the hands have some blue coming onto them, the mouth isn't white enough, the blush isn't really positioned well, and the white around the eyes could be better. And also the hair doesn't go around the back at all. So to get an idea of how to fix this, I'm going to open up a new window for the UV editor. Then after selecting the texture in the UV editor, I'm going to select all of the models and go into edit mode. And then select only the faces that are using this material. So ignoring how the model moved, we can now see where all of the triangles are in the UVs, which will make it a lot easier for us to place all of the elements. So what I've done is I've just screenshotted that window in Blender, and laid it over the top of everything in Paint.net. So now all I'm going to do is just keep making edits to this and checking how it looks in Blender until it's the way I want it. Alright, so once you've finished your texture, and you've exported it as a PNG, we can start building it into a costume. So this is where we use a tool called Workbench, but I'll actually go through how to install and use it this time. So once you've downloaded Workbench and the patch for it, and you've extracted the folders, to install the patch, just go in and copy the SRC folder. Go to Workbench, Local Modules, Craft World, and then paste the folder, and replace the files. And that's it. We can just delete the patch now. Before you start using Workbench 2, you want to go into the Mods folder, delete Arcade, and then in Catbox, in Assets, delete everything in Assets. So now we're going to put a folder here for the skin that we're making, so I'll just call it Blue Bear. And in this folder we're going to put a couple of things. We're going to be putting the texture that we made in here, and we're going to call it Diffuse, and also our config file which we can quickly set up now. So this is pretty straightforward, it's pretty similar to before. Um, we'll just give it a title, Blue Bear Skin, and Description, 
theme. Theme doesn't really matter, but we'll just write Animal Crossing and just write the name again in this section. And that's pretty much it for the config. But we're missing a icon file, which we'll make now. Like before to make the icons, I like to take an existing skin and edit that. So like before, I've got my base color and I'm just going to select all of the icon and then color in the whole thing with the face. And now I'm just going to take some element from the face of the skin and add it to the top of it. You can really make this whatever you want, but once you're done, just remove the original texture. And the edges are kind of hard when using this tool, so I just like to feather it. And then just save the icon. Make sure the file name is icon and move it into the folder with the other two files. I've also just compressed these two images, but now it's time to start using Workbench. So in command prompt, type in cd followed by a space, and then drag and drop the Workbench folder, and just press enter. Now to install the rest of Workbench, you need to install a program called node.js, which is easy to find. Once you do that, you just enter the commands npm install, and and it'll install the rest of Workbench for you. Once that's done, we can input the build command to create the mod file, which is node mod.js dash dash build. And now we're going to type in catbox, which is the name of this folder in here. So whatever the folder name is here is what you write in the command at this part, because everything in this folder is what gets built. You can put multiple mods in this assets folder and they'll all get built to one file. Then after that, you write the game that you want it for. In this case, I want it to be LPP1, but you can also write 2, 3, or LPP3 PS4. But I'm just going to have one, and then just enter the command. If it worked, it'll look like this, where no other messages have come up. If you get any errors, there's probably something wrong with your config file. But now in the catbox folder, there's a new folder called build, where you'll then find the mod file in this folder. So I'm just going to take it and put it with the rest of my files. You can also just rename this to whatever you want, so I'll call it Blue Bear. But something you might have noticed is that we didn't actually include any normal or bump maps in the skin. So as it is, the material won't really work in game, it'll look super weird. And while you can add your own to the config, I find it's a lot easier just to copy an existing one from the game, which is what we're going to do in Toolkit next. You can also use this to add bump maps to regular costumes, it doesn't have to be just skins. So in Toolkit, I've opened the game's file archive, and I'm going to find a material gmat that I want to take the properties of for my skin. And I already know that a good one is the pinata skin, which is called Carnival. Here. And we can see the bump map that it uses for this. Another reason that I'm using this skin is that it has the same UVs as our custom skin. If I used a material like the White Cotton or Sackboy's default skin, the texture wouldn't really be aligned properly because of how those skins use repeating patterns and not an actual layout like this one. While you're in this menu on the right with the list of dependencies, find the base texture for the skin, which is this one here for the pinata, and remember what its GUID is. In this case it's 16876. So once you find the GMAT that you want to use, right click it, go export, mod, GUID, and then save it. Now in Toolkit, we're going to load our profile that we're going to install the mod to. Once you've done that, go to Tools, Install Mod, and then find the mod file that we built using Workbench, which is here. Once you do that, you can see it in the costume material folder. But before we do anything else, we need to set up the normals and bump map for the skin. So I need to find the texture that we made for this skin, which will be in resources, textures, and it'll be one of these. In this case, it's right down the bottom. Once you've found the texture and it's selected, go up to the top right where it says SHA1, click on the value next to it, and copy it by pressing Ctrl C. Now we're going to install the GMAT that we exported from the file archive. So again, go Tools, Install Mod, and find the mod that we just exported which is here. This is the pinata skin. Now go and find the GMAT that we've just installed, which is in GFX Materials. 
and it'll be the last one in the list. Right click on it, go replace dependencies, and you'll have this new window come up. You need to find the base texture for the skin by looking for a GUID from earlier. For this particular material, it was the 16876. Then in the text box, replace this with the SHA1 value that you copied a moment ago from your skin. Then press update and save. Now this GMAT is ready to be used for our skin. So to start using it, we copy the SHA1 file for this, then go into items, costume material, and find the plan file for your skin. Then go replace, dependencies, and replace the GMAT with the new one that you just copied. And save it. And now the skin should work. But another thing I like to do is just go into edit item details, and in type, select costumes, and user costumes. This just changes where it is in the pop-up menu and lets it be deleted, but you can make these whatever you want. When you're done, you can also export the mod using the GUID option, so you don't have to do any of it again. Now we can go test it in-game. Also, while you're changing the dependencies on your skin, you can change the GMAT to whatever you want in the whole game. Like if you wanted, you could get the GMAT for the basic sponge from create mode, and then just write down the GUID in here, and you could use that as a skin. So in game, if you edited the item details like I did, the costume will be on the far right page of the costumes. Where you can then just equip it like anything else. So we can see that it appears just like it did in Blender, and it also has the bump map and normals from the pinata skin. It can look a little shiny at some angles, but that's where you might want to find a different skin in the game to use as a base for the properties. And that's basically how to make a custom skin, and use Workbench and Toolkit. A lot of what I use and talk about here will be linked in the description, but if you need any help, feel free to message me on Discord.